Hey everyone, and welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen, and this is episode 170. If you are a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming back. And if you are a new viewer, thanks so much for checking out this very special episode of Yarngasm. Um, and thank you in general for checking out my podcast. Um, this is, as always, a podcast about knitting, spinning, and hand dyeing yarn in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, this just happens to be my Halloween episode, which is which pretty much explains why I'm dressed this way. Um, I'm excited about my costume and I thought, why not? Let's podcast in costume. So <laughs> there you go. Um, so let me, you know, before I, you know, get into the usual thing, uh, topics, uh, I guess I'll just give you a little story as to why I decided on this costume. Um, well, last year I had gone with a bunch of my friends to this exhibit at the Metropolitan Museum uh, of Art in Manhattan, in uh, New York. And there was an exhibit called Death Becomes Her, A Century of Mourning, where it covered the entire century from, I believe, like 1800s to 1900s uh, of mourning attire that women and, you know, mostly women, but men would wear when, you know, a loved one or relative passed away. Um, and they would just, all the styles and fashions and the whole evolution of it um, throughout this, throughout like 100 years, uh, I just found so fascinating. And I fell in love with this one gown uh, and I was so determined. I was like, that's going to be my Halloween costume. Um, unfortunately, uh, I found a couple patterns online, but it was just way beyond my expertise um, as far as sewing is concerned. Um, but I was able to hunt down. Um, it's very windy out. Very, very windy and overcast. Anyway, sorry. Um, I was able to find through Etsy uh, this wonderful uh, vintage shop, and I, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, very good communication. Uh, I found this really awesome top. Uh, it's actually from the 70s, but throughout the 70s and the 80s, there was like this whole resurgence of the Gibson girl style, and you know, just Victorian shirts were back in. So this was design. This was apparently the style in the 70s. So she had this top size fit me and everything. Uh, it was black and perfect and you know the price was right and I just contacted her I said hey can you get it shipped to me by Thursday and ooh, wow creepy. <laughs> um, happy Halloween. Uh, so yeah it, it arrived yesterday earlier than expected so yay awesome uh, and then I also found a pattern this uh, site that makes these historical dress patterns that you can download PDFs for cut, cut them out and paste them together and just recreate a historical skirt from Victorian times or Edwardian skirt, uh, which I'll show off to you guys in the uh, sewing section of this podcast. So I'm just super excited that I was able to pull it all together rather last minute. Um, so Dennis, unfortunately, well, he's going to dress up, but you know, he kind of waited to the last minute because I kept asking him, I asked him two weeks ago, I was like, what do you want to go for, go as for Halloween? And he's like, ah, eh, you know, anyway. But then I think he saw my costume and he's a little jealous. So he's like, all right, crunch time. What do, what do I go as? So that will be determined. Um, if he, if he, nothing new, he, he'll probably just go as what he went for last year, which was the cat vest <laughs> that I sewed for him. So anyway, I'm sure we'll take plenty of photos on Halloween and I'll be happy to share them with you. But anyway, this is a podcast about knitting, spinning, and hand dyeing yarn, as I mentioned. Uh, so I guess I will just get right into that. Um, and I'm not working with show notes this week, so bear with me. Uh, nothing off the needles this week, sadly. I wish there was, but them's the breaks. But I do have lots of knitting to show you. Um, as I mentioned, I finished this one sock uh, from Lara Jinx, or uh, Jinx Yarns. Uh, Lara is the hand dyer behind Jinx Yarns and the host of the uh, Head Dyer's Notebook podcast. So I finished this sock at Rhinebeck and I didn't get very far on the second sock since I last showed it to you. Uh, I did the heel turn and then I may have knit just a couple rows on the foot, but it's almost done. If I really wanted to, I could finish it by tomorrow. That's all I did today, but you know, I don't think it's going to happen. And she's actually hosting a, um, a Socktober Cal, which ends on Saturday. So. If you have some Jinx yarns and you want to crank out a pair of socks and enter to win a prize, she's co she's hosting Cal. Check it out. Um, but yeah, I don't think I will make the deadline for that. Uh, but I really enjoyed. Uh, I'm really enjoying working with this yarn. It's her Lantern Festival colorway, which is very, extremely autumnal, um, and just very glittery. It's on her Glitz sock base. So yeah, and as always, I'm using or I'm using my Carbons US. 1.5s 
uh, DPNs, which I am surprisingly, which I surprising, blah, 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 I cannot talk, which uh, I surprisingly am enjoying. So that's one thing. Uh, the other thing on the needles, uh, which is living in my homespun house bag, my Molly, um, which I love. It's so deep and big and roomy and it just has everything that I love on it. Octopuses, moths, butterflies, the moths, debatable, but I love the way they look. So, <laughs> and just mauves and minty greens and grays and naughty kitties. So I love it. Um, so I'm keeping the pattern in here. It's big enough to hold a pattern, which I love. So yay. And the good news is I've been putting a dent on this. I've been working on it pretty much every single day this week, but here's where I am. I finished the first chart, chart A of the back. So Yay, milestone. Uh, now I just have to knit the rest of the back, uh, which I imagine is just gonna go like up, 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 and then I shape the, the sleeves because it is a drop sleeve um, sweater. And I'm using Quince & Co's Lark Base, which is a 100% wool uh, worsted weight uh, four ply in their Damson colorway. And I am really, really enjoying this, um, working with this yarn. It's so soft and squishy as yarn should be. and smells amazing um and the color i just i really love um so yeah <laughs> and um i'm using my interchangeable carbons uh in the u.s size eights and as i mentioned this pattern the first couple of rows you're switching needles about like three times you, you switch three different to three different different blah, 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 to three different needles throughout the entire pattern so but yes lovely pattern i am loving the cabling um it just wants me to knit everything with cables now. So yeah, really enjoying that. And I am co-hosting a, a stone cutter. I'm just, did I even mention the pattern name? I don't know, anyway. Um, but yes, the pattern is the stone cutter pullover by Michelle Wong. Uh, and I'm hosting a co-hosting a knit along with Laura from the Fawn Knits podcast. She's also knitting it. And so yeah, you, whoever wants to join in can Double dip into both groups. Uh, we both have Stonecutter uh, Cal threads in our Ravelry group, so feel free to join in the chatter if you need support. Um, Michelle Wong has offered to, you know, give you help if you ear burn her in the thread, um, and if you, you know, what have you. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, Kemper from the Junk Yarn Podcast had reached out to us, and she's uh, doing a cable along. So d we decided to join forces, me, uh, Lara, and. Kemper um, and yeah so if you are all, if you're knitting a stone cutter and you want to double dip into Kemper's uh, cable along feel free to do so I think it'll be awesome it's everybody it's a win-win situation so you know three opportunities um, to win prizes so awesome <laughs> so okay I'm trying to think what else I wanted to say about that I don't think I think that's it for this week on that um, so yeah otherwise uh, the other thing that I cast on is my um, quadri hat, another pattern by Michelle Wong. Uh, if you remember, I had knit, I started knitting a hat for Dennis using uh, Jill Draper Makes Stuff in her Empire Mini base, which is a worsted uh, Coriadale, uh, is it Cori? Ram, I'm sorry, Rambouillet. It's a very high twist Rambouillet, very squishy and spongy and all around great yarn. I just was not enjoying the yarn for the pattern. It was very stiff um, and very not easily easy to work with, um, especially with larger needles. So unfortunately, I know I got really far in that, but I frogged it. So <laughs> yeah, or it, it's in a bag somewhere. I haven't officially frogged it, but I've, I've decided that I'm going to frog it. Um, I just don't like the hand of it. It's too stiff and I would not I don't know I don't I want to give Dennis something soft to wear on his head as he, if he's going I want him to love the hat and I can tell I would not like wearing a stiff hat like that uh, the, as I mentioned the yarn is beautiful no problems with it it's just not suited for the pattern so um, I had ordered some skeins from Owl. Uh, if you recall last week I mentioned that I was waiting in line at Rhinebeck <laughs> only to, for like about 15 minutes uh, with some yarn uh, to knit my quadri hat out of or my second quadri hat out of only to find out that it was a cash only line so i came home and ordered some more online and it came so i already cast it on Ooh, i already cast it on um using dpn's us size eights i don't even remember who makes these i think they're 
clover. I got them from Joann's or Michael's a long time ago, but uh, this is the ash colorway. And let me see. It's O Wool Classic Worsted, and it's 100% uh, certified organic merino, uh, 99 yards per skein, so I got two. Um, and yeah, it calls for eight to nine, or no, the pattern calls for US size eight to nine, and which says, oh no. So the pattern, call, the pattern calls for US size eight needles, and according to the tag, it's perfect. Um, oh gosh, I have a horrible feeling. I'm, just, I'm expecting a FedEx delivery, and I'm dressed up like this, and normally FedEx comes around like 12.30 to one o'clock. It's about that time, so I'm probably gonna freak out the, the male guy when he comes, but it's Halloween, guys. So anyway, let me show you, <laughs> okay, how far I've gotten on this. So I'm just on the, on the ribbing of the bottom, but oh my gosh, you guys, it's night and day. I cannot, you can't, it's like apples to oranges. You cannot even compare, it's just, like butter. It's knitting up so smoothly and such a pleasure to knit with. Um, and yeah, so I have some more wool that I purchased from uh, Gage Intention uh, a while ago. So I have that to rip into, but yeah, so far I've just had a really great experience with wool. The one thing that I will say that's a little questionable is the smell. I don't know any of you who've had the same experience, but it's not a terrible smell, it's just an odd smell and I would liken it to crayons. I don't know if that's normal or why it smells like that, but I know after I soak it, the smell will definitely go away, but I, I just find it a little interesting as far as why it smells like crayons. I'd love to, yeah, if, if it's just me, I don't know, let me know. It could just be the sheep. That's it, that, that's all, who knows? But anyway, it's organic, the organic smell. <laughs> um, okay, so. But that's not all. I have more on my needles. Um, I feel really hyper today. What's up with that, guys? What's up with that? Um, anyway. Uh, so yeah, I, as you know, I cast on a, an Imogen tee. And look at this. My headphones are totally tangled in this. I am so organized today, guys. No show notes. Headphones tangled in yarn. I'll untangle it later. So anyway. Okay, so I cast on an Imogen T, uh, a pattern by Quince & Co. I forget the exact designer, designer's name, but I was inspired by Jenny of the Tiny Paper Foxes podcast. She had wore one on her podcast and I was like, I have to knit that. Um, so I cast it on in this lovely gothy hand dyed yarn of my yarn uh, on my Volca base, which I know I said I was, it's a variation of, um, wow, it's really windy. Um, it's a variation of Nevermore. My, it's like a black, dark, purplish gray colorway. Um, and I decided just to name this a totally different colorway name. Uh, I've decided on Black Pearl because there are like noticeable vari variations in there. Uh, you have some grays, dark grays, and some dark purples and pinks. Just very muted, very goth. <laughs> and yeah, I'm, I've definitely put a, a dent in this. Um, I, what did we do last weekend? We, went, we drove up to a friend's place last weekend and this was the perfect car knitting. I mean, occasion, it's for the most part, it's just stocking it in the round, in the round, but then it's broken up by this relatively simple, uh, intuitive um, frost flowers pattern. And yeah, so I am loving this. It's so, as Volca is, I, I just really love knitting with it. It's uh, an, a merino nylon cashmere. I believe it's 80% um, superwash merino, 10% uh, nylon and then 10% cashmere and yeah it's the fa my most favorite base that I that I dye on so I love I love using it to knit and it's four ply so perfect for cabling perfect for sweaters and garments it just has a wonderful lovely hand so very excited about that and I'm just using some US size fives um, yeah US size fives clover bamboo yes so and because it's Halloween it's never, it, it doesn't have to be Halloween to use skulls, guys. I just love my Day of the Dead stitch markers. Yay. So anyway, so that's that. Um, I believe I'm gonna be using two skeins. Uh, so around, give or take around like 850 yards. I'm knitting the smallest size, so yes. So sadly, no spinning this week. No surprise there. I really, 
I was watching Laura from The Dyer's Notebook, and she's been on such a spinning kick. I think she spun up like two skeins of hand spun, and I've she's putting me to shame. She really is, and I want to give my Lundrum some love. So, and Carlene from Made with Carlene or G uh, has just received her uh, her ladybug spinning wheel in the mail. So I I am so behind on spinning. I I want to jump on the bandwagon so badly because yeah, I just. I, I've got to finish some spinning that I've been doing. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So I guess I'm going to move right along into sewing. So as I mentioned, I found this pattern on Etsy. It's called Black Snail Patterns, I believe. Again, down bar because I'm blinking on these names. But um, I did a couple of modifications. It's not my best sewing job ever. I mean. I still consider myself a relatively, I'm still relatively new to sewing, um, even though I've, I've definitely got the swing of a lot of things. Um, but then there are just some techniques that I'm still a little shy about um, doing. So I found a couple workarounds and let me just show you. Um, I'm gonna try and post a photo of the actual pattern so you know what I was trying to do and then show you what I actually did do. So it's very close. But. Okay, so here's a skirt. It has kind of like a, a pointy belt which I definitely had to improvise. Uh, I just, I actually used some uh, hem tape to kind of keep it down. But uh, yeah, it's, it have, has pleats. It's a very long skirt. I would say about like, I want to say like about four feet long. So there's no train, but there are pleats in the back. Uh, the pattern had actually called for me to install a placket, which I have never done before. And I don't really feel comfortable doing, but um, or I didn't feel comfortable installing. So I just, worked around and or I couldn't find a tutorial online. So basically I just worked around and installed a zipper instead. So else, you know, otherwise it was just a lot of fabric that I had to cut out um, and just, you know, read the directions over and over again to make sure I was doing everything right. But I got the fabric surprisingly at my local fabric store. Um, they have, like they, they have basics. They have solid colored fabrics. They not, and the odd, like random ethnic print. <laughs> so um, it's good for that. And I was able to find some lace, some, you know, just basic stuff to whip this up. And I was done maybe in like four hours. Just, you know, I'm sure if I knew exactly what I was doing um, or had I sewed the pattern before, I'm sure if like, if I were to bang this out again, I could probably do it under, you know, maybe like two and a half hours. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. And uh, yeah, very excited for Halloween. We are actually going to a burlesque party, Halloween party on Friday. And then for, uh, on Saturday, usually what happens is Dennis's friend last minute lets us know, hey, I'm having a Halloween party, come on over. So that might happen. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. Highly recommend if you're looking for a creepy, gothy Victorian Halloween costume to whip up next year, or just in general, you know, because why wouldn't you want to dress like this every day of the week? <laughs> It's fun. Um, but yeah, I had a cut there because the FedEx guy did come and I answered the door like this. He wasn't even interested. He was just like, whatever, um, here's your package. <laughs> but I was like, I'm in my Halloween costume, boo. <laughs> anyway, um, but yes, that's my sewing for the week. Um, well, no, I did sew another, I actually did sew another ray skirt um, using the leftover fabric from my, uh, my Anna dress that I sewed and you know decided to be resourceful I'm like hey this would be cute in a skirt as well and I, I actually added pockets um, I don't have that to show you this week maybe next week I'll wear it and I can show you what I did in the mods that I did to it um, but yeah it turned out really well and yes so okay I am gonna move on to shop update uh, I'm gonna skip over ask away uh, this week just because I have got a lot on my plate today so, and I wanted to get an episode out to you guys. Uh, so I'm gonna move in on to shop update stuff. Um, as you know, I've been doing a little sewing and I posted something on Instagram. I've been trying to put out a few more project bags because I have all this fabric and it's just sitting, not sitting there, but you know, it's like, I, I don't want it to sit there. Um, and I love making project bags. They're a lot of fun. Um, and I, you know, it's just having the time and the energy to put out a lot of project bags uh, in the shop. 
each week, uh, which I don't have, but I found myself a little downtime this week, so I made two little notions pouches, or they, they could be project bags, I would say, um, and I'm gonna try and whip up some more tomorrow, or today, l later on, uh, after I'm done dyeing some yarn, but I just made little tiny, um, well, not tiny, but you know, uh, just small project bags. You can house your uh, socks, your sock projects in here. It's big enough for that. Uh, you can use them for mini skein storage, for notions, um, or what else could you do with it? Yeah, just some medium size, small to medium sized notions and it's on this really, really lovely fabric by Cloud9 that I found online. Um, just a little four inch handle and little interior so it has a little box bottom so it can stand up on its own a little bit um, these are rather floppy so it's perfect if, if you would just want to chuck them in your purse or whatever and you know they're great I think so I definitely want to whip up a little bit um, a few more of these and I, I know for the bigger bags I like having the canvas bottom just because if you have needles poking in there and what have you um, yeah I just like a little extra sturdiness for the bigger ones um, but yeah here's another one that I did it's very like Art Nouveau. Anyway, I put little a little teapot stitch marker progress keeper on there. And again, this one just has like a simple polka dot lining. Um, so yeah, as for yarn, okay, I'm back with my yarn. Um, <laughs> sorry, it was all hanging up and I didn't think to put them in a box so I'd have them ready on hand to show you guys. Um, but yes, I only have six colorways to show you today, but I am dying some more tomorrow. Um, but I have, I will have Deck the Halls my Christmas colorway on several bases. So that will be in the shop tomorrow. Um, I will have special snowflake. I will also have some uh, Pandora on several bases. Uh, I will have, by popular demand, I will have some more Gashley Crumb. Um, so there's that. And then I will have some more Sweet Dreams. It's a really cool purple, teal, uh, cyan, green speckled, brown speckles, it's just really, really lovely. I don't know, I just really like that colorway. And of course, I will have some Outlander. Um, that will be in the shop tomorrow too. And all these will be dyed across uh, three different bases. I will have, um, I will have Volca, obviously, which is my Merino Nylon Cashmere blend, uh, Footsie, uh, which is my BFL Nylon base, uh, Two Ply, and then uh, Blitzed. And then I'm gonna have some lace in the shop as well. So. Uh, definitely see if you can stop by tomorrow, uh, Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as always. So, uh, yeah, and I'm trying to think what else. Oh, yeah, and as you know, last weekend was the very first, um, very uh, marked the first year that I had left my day job to go full time with Volan Vine Yarn. So, to celebrate, I am going to give away uh, two skeins. Uh, just pop over to the, the Volan Vine Yarns Ravelry thread. Not the Yarngasm Ravelry thread, but there's a separate Volan Vine Yarns Ravelry thread um, where you can just pop in and let me know what's your favorite colorway um, and what you'd like to see in the shop. And that will automatically enter you to win a, uh, a skein of my yarn in a colorway of your choosing. So uh, I just want to say like a big thank you to everybody. Uh, just. Thank you for all your support and your encouragement and just being so excited about you know me going full time with this whole thing uh it's just been a fun 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 ride and i don't regret my decision at all it was probably one of the best aside from marrying dennis adopting a cat and a few other choice decisions this one had to be like one of the best decisions i've ever made in my entire life so i just want to say thank you to everybody who buys yarn for me visits my shop and you know follows me on social media and is just so excited about what I do because yeah, it, yeah, I just really appreciate everything that you guys, you know, just for all your support and encouragement. So thank you. Um, but yeah, otherwise I think that is it for shop update. Um, Blather, I pretty much gave you the lowdown. Halloween, that's, it's my holiday. It's what I love. I love it more than any other holiday. Um, I know a lot of Thanksgiving is a popular holiday with people and Christmas. I mean, I do love this. I love getting together with families, but I'm, I am just so in love with like dressing up and costumes and everything. So it is my holiday. Um, it's my dream one day to have like a big Halloween party, just go all out with the decorations and everything. Um, so yeah, it should. Be, I can't wait to share with you how the weekend goes and <laughs> what Dennis decides to dress up as. Um, you know, 
but yeah, it should be a lot of fun and I can't wait. So that said, I am going to leave it at that. Uh, happy Halloween, happy knitting, be safe, eat lots of candy. Um, and be sure to visit brush your teeth and visit your dentist. <laughs> um, but that said, happy Halloween, happy knitting, and I'll see you next time. Bye. La, 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 la.